In this example, we will cover the multiplication rule for independent events and conditional probabilities. So a circuit system will fail if any of the components in a pathway fails. The following is an example of a circuit system where each component fails independently of the others. Let's calculate the probability that the system works. So if the system works, that means that there's a couple things that are happening. That the, the first event could be that all of the elements work. And so what is that? Or it could be that only one side works. All right, so how many ways can this happen and how many ways can this happen? Well, the likelihood that all of them work is then simply just the probability of A working and B working and C working and E working and D working. Okay, so this whole side works and then this side also works. All right, so this is the probability of A and B and C and E and D. Now, that is just one of the ways that this whole system could work. So we're going to add that to then the other ways that the system can work, and that is that one side works. So if only one side works, let's first start with this side here. That impl or excuse me, let's start with this side here. If only this side works, then that implies that this side is not working. So that would be the probability that A is working and B and C and E and not D. So D is not working. It's the one that's that's out. All right, so that's one way that one side works. However, there is another way that only one side can work and that's if just this side works. And so how can we talk about that? Well, that can happen if A works and B does not work and C does not work and E works and D works. So all of these are working except B and C are defective. All right, but you could easily see that this side will still not work if just one of these isn't working. So let's talk about those events. So A has to work, but let's say B is working, but C isn't. So it's going to then be the weak link in that chain, but luckily E and D are still working, so the entire system still works. Now this could also be the same, like let's say that B isn't working, but C is. So because B is the weak link, this side is completely defective and isn't working, but this side is, so we're still working as the whole system. So this is equal to A and B not working and C and E and D. All right, so those are all the events that are possible in this scenario. All right, so because we know that the likelihood that one of the pieces or the components of the entire circuit is independent or fails independently of the others, we can then apply the general multiplication rule for independent events, which is basically the intersection of these events just become the likelihood of multi uh, the likelihood of each individual event multiplying all those together. So what I mean by that is that this first expression is then probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of, let's make that a P, probability of C times the probability of E times the probability of D. And so this can be added to then the next expression, which of course would be the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C times the probability of E times the probability of not D, which is just D's complement. So if we look up here, D is equal to 0.7. So that's the likelihood that it's working. So the likelihood that it's not working would be 0.3. All right, so that is the first couple of expressions. And you can see that if we were to keep going, then this last expression would be the probability of A times the probability of not B times the probability of C 
times the probability of E times the probability of D. All right, so if we add all of those together, then we will get the likelihood that the system works. And so what are those individual probabilities? Well, for this first set, the likelihood that A works is 0 0.95, B works is 0 0.8, C works is 0 0.8, E works is 0, let's make sure, is 0 0.9, 0, and the probability that D works is 0 0.70. So then we can, of course, do this for the next expression, which is the likelihood that A works is 0 0.95 times B works is 0 0.8. 0 times that C works is 0 0.80 times E working, which is 0 0.90, and times that D is not working is 0 0.30. So again, we can continue on with this. And what we find is that for each one of these five expressions, we get an overall probability. So if we were to multiply all of those out, we would get then the first expression equal to 0 0.38304. The second expression would be equal to 0 0.6416. The third expression will be equal to 0 0.02394. And the fourth expression will be equal to 0 0.09576 and the last expression will be equal to 0 0.9576 as well. So that's what each one of those individual outcomes is equal to, their probability, add those up, and that is then the probability that the whole system works, which is equal to 0 0.76266. All right. is the probability that the system works. All right, so now the second question, it's going to go a little bit quicker, asks, what is, if we scroll up, given the system works, what is the probability that B is not working? All right, so then what we need to look at is in notation, what does this mean? So that's the probability that B does not work given the whole system works. All right, well, we know what the denominator is because we just calculated that the what the probability was of the whole system working, and that is simply just equal to 0 0.762 6, 6. So that's our denominator. So our numerator is the likelihood that B is not working and the system works. And so if we look back up here, we'll look at the events in which the system works and B doesn't work. And we can see that there's two of those events. It's this one here and this one here. So basically, we just need to find the probabilities of these two things, and we will then know the numerator of our conditional probability, which in this case is equal to 0 0.09576 times 0 0.02394. And excuse me, that's an a plus that's adding them together. So that's the two likelihoods in which we're interested in over 0 0.76266. So then that what that means is that the likelihood that the that B does not work given the whole system works is simply just equal to 0 0.1570. All right, hopefully this video helped you understand how to solve this problem.